the one no trump opening is always 10 to 12 not vulnerable and 13 to 15 vulnerable it's only the the one diamond opening when we're vulnerable is uh, potentially 11 to 12 balance but not 10 to 12 So I apologise if you uh, if you're a standard American or two over one player or even Akal, and you tend to assume 15 to 17 for a one no trump or 12 to 14 if you're playing if you're used to playing Akal, that's not what the practice and example hands will be showing tonight. Because although it's a non-precision specific session, uh, I do have to cater for how OCP opens. Um, but it's fairly easy to extrapolate the changed ranges for responding according to how uh, you would normally open hands I have actually played a 14 16 the one no Trump if you have either of those Ellie um, I suggest you ask for a redeal because you got 14 cards <laughs> well spotted Phil yeah, two three four four is fine. Two three five three or two three three five, i.e. with a five card minor is fine. But precision does not or most precision pairs do not open one no trump with uh, a five card major. So yes, you can if you were two two four five or two two five four 5-4 in the minors, um, you could do. I have done. Um, but there's a, particularly if you're 4-5 in the minors, there's such an easy rebid that shows exactly that shape. Um, it needs to be a hand of a particular sort before I would do it. 5-4 um, is a bit different um, if you've got five card diamonds because it takes two rebids to really show that shape so now I'm more likely to open uh, one no trump but with two two four five the two club rebid tends to show four five in the minors after one diamond one something uh, so I'm less likely to open one no trump with two two four five shape but that's just my personal style the system specification for OCP is that 2245 is not open one no trump but uh, plenty of times I've taken a view to do that um, so I won't say that it's wrong sometimes it's it's clearly if you're in the right no trump range uh, opening one no trump can be much more preemptive than opening one diamond um, so there is a case for it just has for my purposes it just has to the hand just has to be the right kind of hand one no trump opening one no trump specifically denies having a five card major if you had a hand like eight six five four two um, in a major you can decide to treat that as a four card suit and open one no trump um, it's a matter for you I, I very rarely do it even with that sort of a hand um, but it's not often when uh, over a third of your cards are in one suit that none of your high card points are it's not often that you pick up a hand like that um, but uh, Certainly, an honorless six card major I would never consider open with one no trump, even if I was six three two two shape. So, if your style for one no trump openings differs from OCP's, then don't worry about it. Um, I'm only telling you what OCP specifies for a one no trump opening. Um, if your style is different, it's fine. And to be honest with you, it won't really affect anything of else of what I'm going to say. So if you play a different range for one no trump openings, or you allow five card majors, or you don't open one no trump if you've got a weak, a weak doubleton, that's fine. Um, it doesn't really affect 
anything else in what I'm going to be telling you over the next few weeks. So there's all sorts of stuff that people play over One No Trump. Whatever you like, if it's completely different than what I'm going to show you, then that's fine. If there's some stuff of what I'm going to show you that you want to cherry pick, then please also do that. But do consider the possible effects on the rest of what you play at the moment. So, for example, OCP's variable one no trump affects the one diamond opening. It affects the one club opening. If we were going to play a significantly different one no trump range, we, you would have to think about the effect on um, those other ones, those other openings. If you play something like Standard American or 2 over 1 or even Ackle, it doesn't matter one jot because all of your one level openings are showing a very wide range of hand, uh, of, of, of strength. And uh, so really your the, the the range that you choose for your one no trump opening doesn't affect anything else if you're playing an essentially natural system uh, with precision where your openings are intermediate if you start having um, a range of one no trump opening that overlaps the 16 high card point barrier then that affects your one club opening uh, Precision has a catch-all one diamond opening that shows any hand that's not suitable for something else that's an intermediate hand. Um, so your one no trump opening range also affects the one diamond opening. So if, if there's somebody who's who's never played, I don't think there will be, but if there's somebody who's never played transfers, please just let me know because it does affect um, the speed at which I'm going to be covering transfers and the depth. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to assume that you you basically know what transfers are supposed to achieve and how we achieve it and the advantages of using it. But if there's somebody, anybody that's completely free to that, uh, completely new to that, please let me know. Okay. So double-barreled stamen, which is basically what or two-way statement um, is what uh, that is, where two diamonds is is also statement, but it's forcing showing a strong hand, and two clubs is non-forcing um, that essentially has an upper limit to how strong respond is going to be. Um, that used to be the original specification for way precision. Um, I have seen people playing it, but it's not often. Uh, and very few precision pairs, as far as I'm aware, still play that. Um, it was in vogue for a while, um, but uh, not anymore. So you can you can look up double barreled stamen on Google um, or two way stamen. Um, I'm not sure what you'll find it called, uh, but it doesn't have many adherents these days.
Okay, I'll come back to non-promissory statement a little bit later on. Um, but uh, in the meantime, we're just going to look at um, statement itself. So there is something worth stressing, which I, I will come to later on, um, about when you should be using statement and when you should be using transfers. It's particularly relevant uh, when you've got both majors with at least five cards in one of them. Um, but it does have an effect elsewhere as well. This is the absolutely crucial thing, and it's it always worth, um, to my mind, uh, stressing, because uh, I still see when I'm playing in BBO, I still see people use stamen on hands that are totally inappropriate, and some of the time, uh, partner makes a response that you can't sensibly cope with. Um, and if that's the case, then you shouldn't use stamen at all. So if you want to start adding possible responses, um, apart from the, the standard three responses that are allowed uh, with standard implementations of statement, i.e. two diamonds, two hearts, and two spades. If you want to start allowing opener to bid other things, then that's fine, but it does affect, as I've said there, um, uh, what responder needs in order to use statement. So, I mean, those two hands that I've just shown there are typical um, uses for what people call garbage stamen. Uh, if you are three suited with a club shortage or a very weak hand with four, five plus in the majors, um, you can bid two clubs and plan to pass whatever partner bids. Um, if, if partner bids two diamonds when you've got both majors, like the second hand there, then you just convert to your longest major. Um, and that's a perfectly good use for stamen. But if you include two no trumps, three clubs and three diamonds as possible responses to the two club stamen inquiry, then you can end up playing at a ridiculously high level. In other words, if you had the second hand there and partner might bid two no trumps or three clubs or three diamonds over two clubs then you'd be better off just transferring to hearts and forgetting about the possibility of a 4-4 four, four spade fit because you can't afford to play at the three level. Similarly if partner might bid three clubs to show five card clubs and no four card major you wouldn't want to use stamen on the first of those two hands because uh, now you end up playing in three diamonds and you've no reason to suspect that three diamonds uh, is going to be any better than one no trump. It's much more likely to get doubled. That's for sure. So do think about it if you're going to start augmenting the possible responses to statement. Um, Okay, any questions so far about um, just the implications of using stamen and what requirements? There is no minimum point count for using stamen, for using standard stamen, where the only possible responses are two diamonds, two hearts, or two spades. You could potentially bid it with a, a Yabra. The point is, is that if you're going to use stamen, you must be able to cope sensibly 
with anything that Responder might bid over your two clubs inquiry. As long as you can satisfy that, uh, then there's no, uh, there's very, very few restrictions really on which hands can and can't use stamen. So if you've got a, an essentially weak, i.e. a weak hand that's not worth an invitation uh, with 4414 shape with a singleton diamond, you cannot possibly afford to use stamen because if partner bids two diamonds, you're absolutely snookered. You know, you now might end up playing in a 4-2 fit in a major. Um, which is not generally desirable. Just to give you an example, so there you can't afford to bid two clubs. If partner bids two diamonds, you've got nowhere to go sensibly. If you bid two hearts or two spades, you're promising a five card or longer suit. If you bid two no trumps, you're promising ostensibly about a 10 count which you don't have so although you might not like the idea of playing in one no trump you can't really afford to do anything other than pass one no trump okay any questions so far about stamen before I move on I haven't quite finished yet with Stamen, but uh, and we will come back to it a bit later on. Because, okay, Sonia, if you if you didn't have four card spades, why are you using Stamen rather than simply transferring into Hearts? You see, if you had a a weak hand. But if you, what's the rest of your hand, Sanya? You say 4-3 in the majors. If that's the case, why aren't you, why why are you bothering? If you've got 4-4-3-2 four, four, shape or even 4-3-5-1, you've no reason to think that... Uh, that two hearts here is going to be better than playing in one no trump. You might be playing in a 4-2 fit. When partner bids two diamonds, there's nothing that says they have to have three card hearts. You could be opening a huge can of worms here. If you had five card hearts, just transfer into the hearts and pass. No, if you're going to bid two hearts over two diamonds, it must be at least four five. When partner bids two diamonds, you're left. It's like that hand I just showed you in that last paragraph above, Sanya. If you know that's a, a weakish hand with four four in the majors. And it's a hand that's not particularly wanting to play in one no trump. But you can't afford to do anything over one no trump. Uh, not over one that, that shows 13 to 15 points. If your one no trump was 16 to 18, then yes, you could. But that's different. Um, if you bid two clubs and partner bids two diamonds when you have that 4-4-1-4 four, four, four hand, what are you going to do? There's no guarantee that whichever major you pick, they're going to have three card support for. Okay, they will have two card support. Um, 
for sure. But you've no reason to think that playing in two hearts or two spades is going to be stronger than, uh, oh, sorry, better than. So, Sonia, do you see what I'm getting at here? Play, playing in a 4-2 fit is, is not a good idea. You know, some of the time you'll find when ops have got more more of the trump suit than you have, um, especially if they're not... Right, but that, if you're going to play that, then that's fine. But what are you going to do now when you are 4-6? in the majors and partners 3-3 three, three in the major but prefers spades so you end up playing in a 4-3 fit in spades when you could be in a 4-6 fit in hearts so if you're going to do that then that's fine but you need to completely change your attitudes towards responding to one no trump Okay, so if you don't play four-way transfers, then your two-no trump response to one-no trump tends to be a natural invitation. If you do play four-way transfers, then your two-no trump response to one-no trump is a transfer to diamonds. So now, if you want to invite to three-no trumps, you need to go via stamen, which means that the sequence one-no trump, two clubs does not guarantee that responder has a four card major he might simply have a balanced invitation to three no trumps so if you don't play non-promissory stamen then sequences like one no trump two clubs two spades two no trumps tends to show four card hearts and one no trump two clubs two hearts two no trumps tends to promise four card spades because otherwise why are you bidding stamen if you don't have a four card major if you're playing non-promissory stamen then that isn't the case now if it goes one no trump two clubs two hearts if you've got four card spades and not four card hearts you have to bid two spades specifically and that shows an invitational at least hand with four card spades and it's forcing because you're not necessarily going to be jumping to game in spades or game in three no trumps um, you may have an invitational hand so at least partner has to bid two no trumps or three spades if they wouldn't accept an invitation and three no trumps or four spades if they would We'll come back to that in a minute I think okay so um, I mentioned the two-way two diamond uh, and we deal with that specifically next week uh, we spend the whole of next week is looking at the two-way two diamond um, if you want to anticipate that you can look it up on the one no Trump page on my website what that allows us to do coupled with stamen is that we can differentiate between mild invitations to three no trumps or four of a major and strong invitations to, to three no trumps or four of a major and the difference with OCP is stay manic invitations tend to be only interested in game if opener is maximum whereas invitations via the two-way two diamond are interested in game if opener is better than minimum so if you're playing a 13 to 15 one no trump a stay manic invitation is only interested in game if opener's got a 15 count whereas via the two way two diamond they want to be in game if opener hasn't got a bare minimum 13 count
like I said, more about that next week, but just bear in mind in, in the example and practice hands later on that uh, this week we haven't covered the two-way two diamond, so stay manic invitations will basically have to cope with everything. Um, but ultimately, uh, with OCP, um, the invitations via Stamen tend to be only interested in game if opener is maximum. Any questions on Stamen? We will come back to, to Stamen and arguments about whether you use Stamen or whether you use transfers. Uh, we will come back to that later on. Um, but uh, that's all I'm going to do for Stamen just for now. Any questions so far? Just see about a couple of example hands. No. If you're playing OCP or if you're playing non-promissory stamen, then it doesn't. If you rebid three no trumps, then yes, there is an implication that you have four card spades. Because otherwise, if you're going to bid game anyway, why are you using stamen? But if you bid two no trumps, then it's not promising four card spades. If you if you had four card spades and in an invitational hand, you would bid two spades over two hearts. So, two no trumps is simply a hand that, if you weren't playing non-promissory statement, would bid two no trumps over one no trump in that sequence. But if it goes one no trump, two clubs, two hearts or two spades, three no trumps, then clearly you have got a four card major or you wouldn't have bothered with statement in the first place. Um, so it does it does to does tend to promise four in the other major if you do that, but that's not the case with a two no trump rebid. Okay, Wally. Okay, let's look at this hand. Um, So we're not vulnerable here, so Norse using a 10 to 12 one no trump, so that's a one no trump opening. So we've got a, a 13 count here. Um, it's a little bit quacky. Uh, if we had better controls, we might bid this hand slightly differently. But if partner's got a bare 10 count, with two, three in the majors, we don't necessarily want to be in four, four spades. So this is invitational with four card hearts and at least five spades. Um, if you want to play small and in this kind of a situation then you're welcome to it doesn't really affect anything else uh, I'm not particularly keen on small and I've never really seen um, any massive advantage in it uh, it works better on some hands than others but it's quite difficult to predict in advance which those are going to be so knowing that south is 5-4 at least in the majors um, North has good controls in the majors, good support for both. So he's quite and and their maximum for their 10 to 12 one no trump. So they're quite happy to bid for. Oops, sorry, Roger, forgot to claim. Oh well, not to worry. In fact, no, I'll tell you what, I'll just send that one again.
like I said, Tanya, I, I've never been a big fan of Smolin, even opposite a, if you're using a strong no trap, to be honest. Um, I've seen it cause as many problems as it solved, personally. Um, but uh, if it floats your boat, then that's fine. It doesn't really affect anything else. Um, right, next hand. So this time we're vulnerable. standard sort of sequence So I mentioned about um, weak and strong invitations to three no trumps. This is an example here. North is 13 to 15. So really, your mileage may differ um, depending on your how aggressive your style is. But uh, really, we only want to be in game here if south if sorry if north has a maximum opening. Uh, so we would tend to invite via stamen. So this is a hand that's worth a mild invitation to three no trumps that doesn't have a four card major. If South did have a four card spade suit, they would bid two spades over two hearts. And that would show the same hand without four card hearts, but with four card spades. But a hand that was at least in, interested in... Uh, uh, because that's what we do. No trump bidding tends to be mostly about uh, maths, in my experience, Paula. Um, if you've got if you've got about 25 points between the two hands on balance, you you probably want to be in game. OCP is a fairly aggressive system. Um, if you uh, if you start discounting that that jack, you will miss a significant number of games. That's my experience over the last um, 30 or 40 years, because I've played with partners who who said, "Oh, I didn't like to open it because I only had, you know, a 13 count, and one of those was Jack X or Queen X for that matter." Um, and uh, and we've missed game as a result. Singleton kings, singleton queens, different matter. But but doubletons 
um, I'm not as bothered about. If I had stiff king queen, I might not count that as a full five high card points. I might count it as four rather than five because um, unless partner's got the jack or the ace, I'm going to lose one of them. But I don't discount that completely and just count it as a three count. Um, but it has more, that has more to do with whether I accept invitations rather than whether um, I necessarily open the hand with one no trump in the first place. Okay? Um, like I said, if your style is to ignore Jack X, then that's fine. If it, if it works for you, then do. But um, here I'm interested in, South is interested in whether we've got 25 points between the two hands. Um, and uh, okay, very occasionally you might come unstuck where partner say has Queen X in spades. Um, but uh, by and large, on balance, I haven't found it causes a problem. Okay. So here, north is not maximum, and they are in fact minimum for their one no trump opening. So they're just going to pass. Um, even if you give uh, north, say, the king of clubs rather than the queen, um, that would still only give them um, a 14 count. And strictly speaking, they should still not accept an invitation if you're playing OCP. Because if partner had an 11 count and they were interested in being in game opposite a 14 count, they would use the two-way two diamond. That's, that's how um, much this is a game of maths when it comes to no trump bidding. Uh, no guarantees. There'll be some... 24 counts where combined 24 counts where you can happily make nine tricks and some 28 counts where you can't but all I would point out is that uh, Mechwell for example make a living by bidding and making three no trumps on combined 22 23 24 counts um, they make a living doing that uh, and okay their card play is better than most of ours uh, certainly better than mine, um, but uh, there's still plenty of 23, 24 counts where you where you can make game. Um, and certainly, if I've got 25 between the two hands, uh, I want to be in game. Um, do we have a lead yet? No, I don't think. No, I don't think I did. Okay, just this is a quite a good example of. Uh, the implications caused by non-promissory statement. So East is going to open a 13 to 15 one no trump. So here West has a hand that's worth a mild invitation to three no trumps or four spades. They're only interested in game if East has a maximum. But here, they have to show the spades specifically with two spades. 
because if they bid two no trumps partner will assume that they don't have four card spades and you're going to miss the spade fit now look at the west hand they do have a maximum and they do have four card support for spades but over two spades they have to bid three no trumps or four spades depending on whether they've got support for spades or not because the two spades is a hand that's worth at least a mild invitation and east would accept that invitation whether it's to three no trumps or four spades because they've got a maximum so if you gave east say i don't know two card spades and four clubs they would bid three no trumps over two spades but as it is they bid four spades and they must bid four spades it's not good enough to pass two spades um, and it's not good enough to bid three spades to show the spade support three spades shows a hand that uh, has four card spades but wouldn't accept an invitation to game And before anybody asks, no, if East wouldn't accept an invitation but did have four card spades, they oughtn't to pass two spades. Because it is possible that West is considerably stronger. Um, they, they may not, they may have a hand where they have specific worries about one of the miners, for example and uh, um, if it goes one no trump two clubs two hearts two spades two no trumps they now have a chance to bid three clubs or three diamonds to imply a shortage in the other minor and so they only want to be in three no trumps if opener has a decent holding there so two spades is strictly speaking forcing uh, I won't say it's never passed uh, I've done it myself but uh, probably only when I've pushed to a, uh, a one no trump opener in the first place Okay, any questions? Yes, you could do. Uh, while he's if West rebid three no trumps over two hearts that would tend to promise four card spades and East would simply convert to four spades um, because otherwise there's no there's no sense in uh, in West using stamen in the first place if they don't have a four card major there's no point in using stamen if you've got a hand strong enough to bid three no trumps you just tend to bid three no trumps okay um, so it, it's when you rebid two no trumps that you are denying four cards in the other major when when it's gone one no trump two clubs two hearts or one no trump two club two spades if you bid two no trumps you're definitely denying certainly if it goes one no trump two clubs two hearts you're definitely denying um four card spades that's obviously not true over one no trump two clubs two spades where you might well have four card hearts 
but since partners specifically denied having four card hearts when they bid two spades, um, there's no point introducing them. So, so two no trumps could be either a hand with four card hearts, but it doesn't have to be. But either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, Walid? Right. There's no other questions. Let's move on to uh, transfers for a while. Okay, we'll come to jump shifts a little bit later on, but uh, let's just concentrate. We've covered stamen. Let's just concentrate on transfers for the time being. So OCP uses four suit transfers um, so that you can transfer into absolutely any suit. The only special one is the two diamond bid, which is, as I've said, a two-way bid. It's either a transfer to hearts or it might be a balanced ish and it doesn't have to be balanced but a uh, an invitation to three no trumps or some other game it doesn't have to be an invitation to three no trumps even um, and it might even be a slam going hand um, but if you want to find out more about that you'll have to come next week it's a very very powerful weapon that two way two diamond um, and you can use it on lots of different hands to great effect uh, I say it myself it, it's it's one of the better things I've ever come up with uh, in terms of bridge theory um, it was entirely my invention back in the uh, mid 70s um, and I licensed it in the UK back then uh, and it's one of the better things that I've ever come up with uh, because it really works. Ask anybody who uses OCP and they'll tell you. I'm going to skip over this a little bit. Because I assume that most of you will know all of this. Okay, um, so this is, this is a matter of your style as much as anything else. Personally, uh, even if I'm 5332, I always transfer into a five card major over one no trump. Um, even if I'm semi-balanced. Uh, if it was a very weak five card suit, then I might decide to treat it as a four card suit. Um, if I had, you know, an honor list five card major with scattered values, uh, I might not bother because I've no guarantee that two of the major is going to be better than uh, one no trump. With miners, it's slightly different. Um, I would never normally bother to transfer into a five card miner unless I had another, a second suit as well. In other words, if I'm two, three, three, five with a five card miner, I just treat the hand as balanced and, and bid accordingly. Um, if I've got a six card minor, I might, I might treat that as balanced and just bid three no trumps or pass one no trump. But if I was weak and unbalanced, 
I might transfer into it. Or if I was slam invitational, I would transfer into it. But if I simply had a game going hand, I would probably just bid three no trumps if I wasn't interested in a slam. That's just my style. Uh, your style may differ, and that's fine. As long as you and partner are on the same wavelength, then uh, like many situations in bidding, uh, being on the same wavelength as partner is more important than exactly what you and they have decided to play. Okay, so if I've got a mild, sorry, if I've got a, a hand with a, a long minor that's only interested in playing in three no trumps, that I'm not really interested in playing in five of the minor, which needs 11 tricks, and I'm, but I want to be in game, I just bid three no trumps over one no trump. Why, why give ops the info and give them a chance to start doubling um, for leads? Um, for example, over one no trump, two spades, transfer to clubs. Um, when you could just bid three no trumps and they have to lead in the dark. And that is why if you transfer into a minor and then bid three no trumps, um, and there is a rider to this, which I'll come to in a minute, that's a mild slam try. Because if I if I had a hand that was not interested in more than three no trumps, I would just bid three no trumps over one no trump. The difference is when partner super accepts over your transfer to a minor, which I'm going to come to shortly, uh, now the three no trump bid is no longer a mild slam try because they may just be bidding three no trumps because of the super accept. Okay, any, uh, any questions on Okay, so some people just automatically bid three of, of a major particularly rather than two of the major if they really like the suit and their maximum. Um, I feel this is losing an opportunity because, uh, okay, sometimes it may not make a difference to responder. Um, they may be passing whatever you bid uh, at the three level. Just they may not be remotely interested in a game, and sometimes they might have been going to bid game, whether you super accept or not. Um, and so the super accept really doesn't make any difference. However, there are times when partner is really strong. And if you just bid three of the major, okay, they might still 
start queue bidding or they might start uh, bidding for no trumps or whatever. Um, but I feel that you've lost an opportunity to show Responder a little bit more about your hand. So over transfers to spades, we tend to, OCP tends to Q-bid your cheapest ace. Over transfers to hearts, because it's a two-way, two-diamond bid, we do something slightly different, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, because in OCP, because one no trump two diamonds is a two-way bid, we actually use the worthless doubleton method for super accepting. Uh, this is particularly good for um, for showing uh, responder how good the two the fit between the two hands is. Um, it does. It can also be fairly revealing to ops. It has to be said. Um, But it, you know, if partner's got ace king in that suit, then clearly the fit is fairly good. Um, if they've got, say, queen nine x, then whatever else happens, partner knows that probably three nine three no trumps is not going to be terribly successful because the chances are that the diamonds are wide open. Oh, sorry, that suit is wide open. Um, so it can be very valuable. The reason why we use the worthless doubleton method over one no trump two diamonds in OCP is that there is no guarantee that responder has five card hearts or even four card hearts. They might even have a doubleton heart. So you can't be sure that they've got a heart suit. Um, so now the fit elsewhere between the two hands can become fairly important. Um, when partner has got hearts, uh, especially if they've got a weak hand, then it doesn't matter. But if you, if you are super accepting hearts, then you're going to end up playing in hearts come what may. But when partner's strong, it can be very valuable in, in immediately giving you an idea of the fit between the two hands and whether you're, it's potentially even worth looking past a game or not. Okay, so that covers just briefly um, our basic methods for transferring to a major. Just a general word about policy for breaking transfers. Um, again, I, every day when I'm playing in BBO, I see people do this and it just causes a problem. How often have you seen sequences like one no trump, two hearts, two no trumps? And when opener's hand is eventually revealed, they've got two small spades and they bid two no trumps because they don't like spades that's senseless partner partner may be sat there with jack to seven spades um, and uh, you just end up playing in three spades rather than two spades so you should never ever break a transfer because you don't like the suit um, if partner's got a weak hand and you've misbid originally and, and you don't particularly like the suit, you just have to accept it. You've shown a particular shape of hand by opening one no trump. And uh, uh, if you don't have that or, or you don't like what they say, you can't assume 
that two of their suit or even four of their suit is not going to be the right place to play. If you open one though Trump, partner is 100% the captain of the hand. So if you start bidding two no Trumps because you don't like their suit, you're grabbing back that captaincy. And they know a lot more about your hand than you know about theirs. And so it's totally wrong to do that. Um, again, it's a matter of style, Sanya. Uh, I never do it on less than that myself. Um, doesn't stop you from bidding strongly uh, later on, even if you've got four small. But if... Uh, My personal style is that I like to have four to an honour, um, just in terms of uh, guaranteeing a reasonable amount of Trump solidity. You have to always bear in mind that, that when partner transfers, there's no guarantee that they've got any points at all. Um, you know, so... I, Personally, I find it's it's valuable to stick to all the criteria for breaking a transfer, which is maximum for a major good four card support, preferably four to an honour, and reasonably good controls. I wouldn't do it with a really quacky hand that was full of queens and jacks, no matter how maximum I was. So good controls, good support, and maximum. Um, you're not always um, you might sometimes miss a game because you don't super accept uh, when partner's on the verge of making an invitation but decides not to um, because you didn't super accept um, very occasionally you might miss a game but on balance um because OCP is a fairly aggressive system anyway, um, I think you'll come out on top in the long run by sticking to those criteria for, for super accepting. Okay, so there's there's Q bidding method and there's the worthless doubleton method, and uh, either of them is fine. As I said before, OCP tends to use the Q bidding method over transfers to spades, and the worthless doubleton over transfers to hearts. Uh, we'll come to transfers to a minor in a minute because it's subtly different. Um, but, but both of those methods are better than simply bidding three of the major rather than two of the major. Um, which, as I said earlier, is I feel just losing an opportunity to give them more information about your hand. You see, if it goes, for example, one no trump, two hearts, transfer to spades, three diamonds, super except showing the ace of diamonds... There's now also, okay, you're showing the ace of diamonds, but you're also denying the ace of clubs, which can be useful to, to partner. Um, 
and again I would qubit your cheapest ace rather than just qubiting your cheapest control um, I'm a great fan of Italian style qubiting where you you freely qubit first and second round controls particularly below game level um, but this is one instance where I would tend to always qubit an ace I wouldn't start qubiting a king um, but like I said over uh, transfers to hearts we use the worthless doubleton method because it works better when partner might not have hearts at all. Okay, moving on to uh, transfers to diamonds and to clubs, we treat these slightly differently. Um, firstly, the actual break in the transfer, we show by bidding the intervening suit so over one no trump two spades we bid two no trumps rather than three clubs and after one no trump two no trumps transfer to diamonds we bid three clubs rather than bidding three diamonds and that tells partner that we are um, generally maximum but again it's subtly different with transfers to a minor um, which I'll explain a bit more about in a second. Yeah, some people I have seen do it the other way around. So they bid the intervening suit, not super accepting. And if they actually bid the suit, then they are super accepting. Um, I don't like that method personally, but, but I've seen some people do it. Um, the business of trying to right side the contract is is not always successful because um, it's quite often impossible to tell which way round is actually right signing a contract. So, it's subtly different with transfers to a minor because essentially when you super accept, what you're saying is that you would accept an invitation to play in three no trumps based on partner having a six card suit in that minor. So I would say that you ought to be maximum and you should have at least three to an honor personally I, I'm happier if I've got three to two honors or four to an honor because the chances of running six tricks in the minor is hugely increased although you're super accepting the minor it's not certain that you want to actually play in the minor um, so it's a bit different than transfers to a major where you would normally have four card support having three card support especially if you've got three to two top honors um, is is fine you don't have to have four card support uh, and indeed when partners definitely or almost certain got six tricks in the minor uh, your chances of running your six tricks or certainly five tricks in the minor is hugely increased the difference is that you could simply be upper range rather than maximum if you've got quick tricks outside the minor that's the critical thing you don't want to have lots of queens and jacks you want aces and kings yes high, high there stands for an ace king or queen Roger. Um, so it is the criteria are slightly different. There are times when I might be, say, having opened a 13 to 15 one no trump, I might super accept with a 14 count. 
if I've got, say, ace-ace-king outside the suit, and say, king xx in clubs and partner transfers to clubs, I might well bid um, two no trumps rather than three clubs because uh, if partner's got ace queen to six clubs and not a huge amount else, our chances of running nine tricks, even on less than 25 points between the two hands, is considerably good. Because I've got three solid tricks outside. Um, the uh, the club suit, uh, and I've got a good chance of running nine tricks before ops can come to five. If we get six club tricks, I only need to find three tricks elsewhere. And if partner's going to accept an invitation to three no trumps, the chances are that they have a little bit elsewhere outside of clubs. So if you super accept a transfer to a minor and partner simply bids three of that minor, then you absolutely have to leave it. As I said before, if you super accept and they bid three no trumps, this is no longer a mild slam try. Um, if they've got that slam try, then they have to start cue bidding. Um, because clearly, if you super accepted their minor and they were potentially thinking of six clubs or six diamonds, they have to start doing something over three no trumps. So if they bid three no trumps, the implication is that they're bidding three no trumps because of your super accept. In other words, if you didn't super accept, they would probably have passed your bid of three clubs or three diamonds. Similarly, if they want to show a second suit, that's fine, and that's game forcing as ever. If you if you transfer into one suit and then bid a new suit, that is always game forcing. Uh, the only time in OCP that that is not the case is uh, firstly when you're a past hand, uh, where it's probably more likely to be invitational rather than game forcing, or when it's a matter of one no trump, two diamonds, two hearts, two spades which is a special sequence with the two-way two-diamond. But more of that next week. Um, essentially, Phil, yes, because if partner's got... Suppose you super accept with your, your 12 count... And partner themselves got 11 to 12, but they've got, you know, ace, queen to six or even seven. Ah, OK, that's different. If partners, if partners are past hand and I've got a 10 to 12 count, I wouldn't dream of super accepting. Because I know that we, we can't possibly be thinking of game. And I know that they're not thinking of game. That's different. But if partner isn't a past hand... Um, it's no different playing a 10 to 12 one no trump than playing a 16 to 18 one no trump, Phil. Um, and I'll just make one point here, which is, which is absolutely critical sometimes. If you imagine that you've got 24 points between the two hands, um, having two 12 counts is going to play a lot better than having an 18 count and a 6 count. Because if you've got two 12 counts, you've got no problem moving between the two hands. Whereas where when partner's only got a 6 count, the chances are that your opportunities to cross into their hand are likely to be severely limited. So having having relatively even points between the two hands generally is a lot better for playing the hand. Um, 
So yes, I super accept with a 12 count. If partner's got nothing, um, then I might end up going off. But the chances are, if I've got a 12 count and partner's got a 4 count, for the sake of example, and we end up playing at the 3 level, um, if you think about it, ops are nearly missing a game. So I'm unlikely to be uh, um, running into serious problems as far as the score's concerned. Bearing in mind that if I'm opening a 10 to 12 one no trump, I'm not vulnerable. But is this what strength no trump, Phil, are you playing when you're doing that? You see, I have to say, playing a mini one no trump, okay, and you run into exactly the problem that I'm I'm talking about where you've got say 23 24 points between the two hands or less and you're playing a strong one no trump you actually run into that problem much more often when uh, when the points are much more evenly balanced between the two hands then it's it's far more uh, it's far more often the case that actually you have a choice in terms of how to play the hand. You've got a choice perhaps in some suits as to whether to take a finesse against one way against one hand or the other. Whereas when opener, the one no trump bidder, has almost all of the points, you've got no choices because partner doesn't have anything. Do you see what I'm getting at here? I, I'm actually... I'm more encouraged to be aggressive playing a mini one no trump than I am playing a, a strong no trump. So, you know, if, if, I, if I super accept with a 12 count and it turns out the partner's got a one count, I'm not fussed because ops have got a game on. If they don't start bidding, I'm playing, you know, and especially because I'm going to be not vulnerable, um... Uh, we've definitely going to have at least a nine card fit in our trump suit. So I'm not going to go that many off. And uh, an ops have missed a game. Why should I worry? Even if I'm going off. So, uh, no, it doesn't bother me at all. And yes, I really do want to super accept any transfer regardless of my opening strength. Because unless partners have passed hand, and I know that we can't possibly um, have game values, that will affect it. But if partners not have passed hand, it um, uh, doesn't matter if I'm playing a 6 to 8 one, no Trump. Let alone 10 to 12 or 13 to 15. Okay? <coughs> right, so have a quick look at some transfer hands. Uh, oh, I don't want to cover that one. Okay, these are fairly basic hands. Um, right, I, I need you to assume that North is the dealer here, not South. Um, so ignore those two passes. Okay, standard sequence. Transferring to a major and then rebidding three no trumps is normally showing a five three three two hand. Um, scattered values and it's just pass or correct. Um,
Um, what are we doing here? 13 to 15. Definitely. So, three spade bids, definitely game forcing. I mean, utterly game forcing. Uh, if you wanted to play this as a Cupid for clubs, you could do. Um, but uh, the fact is, the super accept of, spade, of clubs doesn't deny having four card spades. Um, so it's, I find it's more useful just to, to bid naturally at this stage. I'd say second suit definitely better than controls at this stage. For the reasons I've just said, Paula. You don't know that North, sorry, that South doesn't have four card spades. And. Spades may be a better slam than clubs in terms of trick taking potential. <laughs> so, Fino Chumps is not saying anything particular here except that South doesn't have four card spades. And it's entirely up to North now as to whether they continue. Obviously, with these cards, they're going to. Um, okay, it's entirely up to you and your partner as to what four diamonds means. Um, this could be a cubid for clubs because we've already effectively agreed clubs as a possible suit. What, over three spades? Um, Sanya, the trouble is with four hearts is as a cubid by south is that it would tend to suggest that uh, south have four card spades to my mind. In other words, they're effectively agreeing spades. It's a cubid for spades rather than clubs. Because there's no guarantee if uh, there's no guarantee that three spades is the sort of hand that North has here. It might not nearly be, be nearly as uh, as distributional as North's hand or as strong for that matter as North's hand here. So if South doesn't have four card spades, they would tend to bid three no trumps. Because that may be the limit of the hand, and that may be, it may simply be that North is saying, okay, I've got four card spades as well as my clubs, how about it? But actually, if you haven't got support for spades, then really three no trumps is where I wanted to play. I'm just bidding three spades in case we've got the spade fit. So four hearts by South over three spades tends to agree heart, uh, spades, rather, and it's a cubid for... for uh, hearts rather than anything else so all three no trumps is saying um, is that you haven't got four card spades so as I was saying before four diamonds might be a cubid depending on your style it might be beta if you're playing OCP uh, but it could be a cubid for clubs clearly spades aren't going to be agreed when south bids three no trumps um, um, we'll take, in this instance, we'll take four diamonds as beta, which is an asking bid asking about how many controls South has. Um, South's going to bid five diamonds, which shows six controls. 
uh, which North immediately knows is the three missing aces. An ace is worth two controls and a king is worth one control. Um, when you're thinking about controls rather than aces and kings. Um, because North has three kings, South's six controls must be uh, three aces. Um, so North knows immediately that South has got ace other or ace to three spades, otherwise they'd have bid um, something else over three spades. They must have the ace of hearts, which takes care of um, the four of diamonds, and they must have at least ace to three clubs, otherwise they wouldn't have super accepted. Um, And yes, seven no trumps uh, is better, but uh, North can't be certain about the Queen of Diamonds. Um, three, four, five, six. And if South doesn't have the Queen of Diamonds, then essentially 12 tricks is all there is in six no trumps. Um, and so seven clubs is safer and better. Okay, any questions about transfers before we uh, we move on? I've Yes, six diamonds would be epsilon, but he doesn't need it. If West is the dealer. Um Well, okay, uh, while he's North, if you're playing OCP, North is going to open the hand one club. Um, and if you're playing standard American or two over one, they're going to open it one club. Uh, how you proceed beyond that. Um, previous hand, which was that? Yeah, but your number six is not my number six. Uh, right, that's going into the realms of defending against one no trump because West is going to... Oh, no, they're not. Sorry, they're going to be pass. You mean the hand where it's gone one no trump, two hearts, two spades, three no trumps, I presume. Is that right? You have to bear with me. I'm using the uh, uh, the BBO the BBO client, um, so I can't actually see. I see the hands that I've selected, or can select, but I don't see the order in which I've selected them. So I'm not sure which uh, board six was. I think it was the hand where South transferred into spades and then rebid three no trumps. Um, If West was the dealer, and it was not going to make much difference, really, there. Yeah, I think you're just going to have to ask away in the forum. Um, right, that is this hand that's shown. If West was the dealer and North end up opening, they will open one club if you're playing OCP. Um, South will show a balance positive uh, with one spade. Um, North will probably bid two clubs 
as Alpha. Um, Southwell bid three clubs, three diamonds, three hearts, three spades. We'll rebid three no trumps, which shows good four card support for clubs and six controls. Yeah. But that is this one. The hand I'm looking at is the hand where North has four card spades, void heart, three diamonds, and king queen to six clubs. All right. Uh, I'll just put the hand in the forum while it. Um, uh, we're obviously. Yes, but I'm trying to establish which previous hand. The hand I'm still looking at is the hand where North South have just bid to seven clubs. That's the hand I'm looking at. The previous hand to that. Right, but the one before this one, I think, was the one where North opened one no trump, South transferred to spades and then rebid three no trumps. And now it doesn't make any difference if West is the dealer because North is still going to open one no trump. So sorry, I don't see I don't see what the question is. Okay, but I haven't got time to to waste on it because. Right. Okay, but I can't see which that is, Walid. I can't see which hand it is. All I can see is the current hand, and I can see the list of hands. Just just post it in the forum. OK, um, because I can't help you. I need to move on because otherwise you're going to get no time for practicing. In fact, you're probably going to get no time for practicing anyway. Very important to remember that if you're playing four-way transfers, raises to or invitations to two no trumps or raises to three no trumps over a two no trump rebid um, have to go via stamen or puppet stamen over two no trumps um, because if you're rebidding two no trumps to show your or bidding two no trumps to show your balanced range and a response of three no trumps is a transfer to diamonds you have to go via three clubs in order to raise to three no trumps So if you're not using four-way transfers, then that sequence of one no trump, two clubs, two hearts, two no trumps suggests that you have four card spades. Um, and Oakner's going to bid three spades or four spades if they do. Because otherwise, as I've said before, there's no point in using statement. If you are playing non-promissory statement, as it's known, uh, then that inference isn't available and you have to specifically show the, the spade suit if you've got it. Okay, I'm not going to spend more time on that because we we've already effectively covered most of that
So if you transfer to one suit and then bid a second suit, <laughs> that is always game forcing, unless it can't be. In other words, if uh, Responder is a past hand and you've opened a 13 to 15 one no trump, it's still theoretically possible for Responder to have a game forcing hand. Just. But if you're playing a 10 to 12 one no trump and Responder is a past hand, essentially there is no way. So now you could bid a sequence like one no trump, two hearts, two spades, three hearts, and that's simply showing a maximum pass with probably 6-4 in the majors. Certainly 5-4. Um, maybe even 5-5. Five, five. Uh, so it's invitational, but able to be forced. It's no longer game forcing. Uh, but where Responder isn't a past hand, then uh, bidding, transferring into one suit and bidding another is universally game forcing. Um, I don't know of any pair anywhere that doesn't play it as that. If you do, you need to seriously reconsider your uh, bidding strategy. <laughs> so if you imagine let, let's stick with the cases where you're 5-4 in the majors or 6-4 if you're weak and you're only wanting to play at the 2 level then it's very easy you've got two choices you can either just transfer into your 6 card suit or you can use stamen and then just bid your longer major over two diamonds. Or pass if partner shows a four card major. That's easy. If you jump to three of a major over two diamonds. Or if you raise partner's two heart or two spade bid to the three level. Then that's clearly an invitational hand. And this doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you're using Smolen or not. Um, either way, you're showing an invitational hand. Um, if you transfer to spades and then bid hearts, then that's a game-forcing hand in principle. With five-card spades and four-card hearts. Similarly, if you transfer into hearts and then bid spades, that's also game-forcing. Um, We'll come back to the two-way two-diamond and the effect on the uh, the times when you've got five-card hearts and four-card spades uh, next week. I'm not going to cover that today. Okay, um, that's really it for transfers. Um, so we will come back to them next week when we look at the two-way two-diamond. Um, just a quick word about jump shift. I absolutely agree, John. That's that's the most common error with people um, getting to grips with OCP. Um, uh, is is exactly that sequence. Um, you have to remember that that three no trump bid is a transfer to diamonds, um, and it's just as likely that opener is going to forget and pass it where actually you wanted to play in four diamonds or six diamonds um, and uh, you've ended up passing three no trumps which goes four off <laughs> uh, so it can be just a problem a problem either way um,
but it can potentially happen over uh, one no trump as well but those tend to come up more often so they tend to get cemented in your in your brain a bit more quickly <coughs> okay um jump shifts quickly so if you've got a a solid robust system of transfers um you don't necessarily need to keep three level jump shifts as game forcing hands uh, ocp we use them as asking bids and generally with big two suited hands um but some people uh do play them as as mildly invitational with unbalanced six card suits uh, and definitely not interested in playing in no trumps um so it's a mild invitation to game in that suit uh always single suited hands um and they're a mild invitation only which has an effect on sequences where you transfer into your suit and then bid your suit at the three level if it's a major um that's a more that's now a more solid invitation if you're playing that style but like i said ocp uses them as uh, as asking bids so as i've said there if you're going to play one no trump three hearts as mildly invitational and the hand that wants to play in three cards three hearts or four hearts but isn't remotely interested in playing in three no trumps then one no trump two diamonds two hearts three hearts is a different kind of hand so it may be you could you could agree that the hearts are only five card um because now you are happy to to consider playing in no trumps opposite a decent hand without uh, decent support for hearts um, you just have to work out if, if you're going to use these methods you just have to work out the difference in the two sequences um, one quick word about uh, South African Texas okay so again consider the difference between one no trump two hearts two spades four spades and if you're going to play south african texas and one no trump four hearts as a transfer to spades the difference is that the four heart response is just a transfer to spades in at game in spades but not interested remotely interested in a slam whereas if you transfer at the two level and then bid game that is a mild slam try if opener is um uh, again perhaps not necessarily having the good trump support but they might be maximum with good controls but without the good trump support so they couldn't super accept um and now opener would be expected to start cue bidding with such a hand and that's a little bit the same as transferring into a minor and then bidding three no trumps when partner hasn't super accepted <coughs> that's a mild slam try since if you're only interested in game the chances are the sequence would just go one no trump three no trumps and it doesn't matter how how uh, um, unbalanced responder is please note because uh, one no trump two spades two no trumps um, is not necessarily uh, sorry one no trump two spades three clubs rather is not saying anything about uh, openers 
stops or absence of stops elsewhere. So if responder is unbalanced, then uh, um, they still don't know that three no trumps is necessarily going to be the right place to play. Um, that's why it's a slam try in the minor. And uh, if you had a hand that was only interested in game, you would just bid three no trumps. Um, okay, guys, just bear with me a second, please. Naomi, are you aiming to go to bed soon, or are you okay if I... Well, I'm a bit behind schedule, so I'm going to... Oh, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. What? Well, when I get a minute, I'll do it. No, okay. just play. I'm going to, I'm going to bed. Bye. 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 The thing is, when it's gone, Sanya, when it's gone one no trump, two hearts, two spades, there is a presumption um, that opener is not maximum with good support for spades and good controls. Otherwise, they'd have super accepted in the first place. Um, but they can be maximum with good controls, but without necessarily the the really good trump support. So I think as long as opener doesn't have something like two small spades here, if they if they are up a range with decent controls, I think they should start Q bidding. Um, uh, because it is a mild slam try, and um, if they're if they're up a range with good controls, then they should start Q bidding. Um, if they're lower range, or they don't have good controls, then they shouldn't. Because if responder was really strong, they would have found a different sequence. If they had a strong slam try and they wanted uh, opener to start Q bidding, unless they were absolutely minimum with, you know, a hand that wasn't really worth one no trump in the first place, <coughs> um, they would probably have, have used alpha over one no trump. Because clearly they're not particularly fussed about the quality of opener's spades unless we're thinking of going past four spades. They're saying, listen, I've got really good spades, long spades, at least six card, if not longer. Um, but if you've got, you know, say high X in spades or even three small, um, uh, we could well have a slam if you're upper range and you've got good controls. Whereas if responder takes control of the hand completely by bidding three spades over one no trump um, you know they could be any strength and, and they're going to be asking specific questions to find out uh, exactly what opener has okay um, yeah the fact is the four spade bid in that one heart one no trump two hearts two spades four spades is inviting opener to Cupid. Okay. Right, guys, let's... Uh, I know we're a bit behind schedule, but let's practice a few hands at least. So can I have four victims, please? Don't be shy. Thank you, Mr. Loot. I can always rely on John to sit south. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, one more, please. Ah, oh, well. Thank you, Barry. Okay. 
we're just going to, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. Uh, I'd like to get through a few, but I don't want to be too long. Um, just hang on a minute. Um, there aren't many hands here, by the way, where... Uh, um, There's intervention. Oh, that's good. Sorry. Uh, the, the dealer is not cooperating. Tell you what, can we just scrap this? Can we have two passes, please? And then ignore the two passes. So north and east, can you pass? Um, no, north, can you pass, please? I know you would open one spade, but I don't want you to, because we're practicing one no trump openings, and you weren't supposed to be the the dealer. Yes, so imagine south is the dealer. So I want two passes by north and east, and then south to open. So it's my fault. Um, Thank you. Right, ignore those two passes. They never happened. All right, Barry, no problem. What browser are you using, Paula? I don't know if she won't hear me.
Uh-huh. Okay. What well, name? Okay, uh, more than one way to skin a cat here. All right, that's interesting, Wally. Um, I seem to remember that Roger had found that Chrome on Windows 10 was actually a problem, had a problem with... Uh, this, though I may be wrong. Roger? Anyway, back to this hand. All right. Okay, so there's two approaches here that North can take. South's one no trump opening is 10 to 12. So North might take a, a very aggressive... Um, approach as north has here and transfer to spades and then rebid the hearts which is game forcing which might come unstuck when south is a bare minimum and doesn't have any real support for spades um, and given that three hearts is game forcing really all four spades is saying is that they don't have four card hearts because three hearts is game forcing. Indeed, four spades is not showing a real liking for spades because they have to bid something. Um, it's showing a measure of support for spades, but they're probably still minimum. Otherwise, they might bid three spades. Indeed, I have to say, with the south hand here, I would be bidding three spades rather than four spades uh, with the principle of fast arrival but because I've got a 12 count um, personally I think the other way you could do it in the way that I would probably do it over opposite a 10 to 12 one no trump is to bid two clubs over one no trump and then three spades over two diamonds Four clubs or four diamonds is a Q. Um, three no trumps is just what it says. Probably two, three in the majors. Good values in the minors. Here with three card spade support, clearly four spades is a better place to go. Um, but... Uh, it's a matter of style and, and knowing partner and, uh, uh, and so on will have an effect on which sequence you choose. So you could either use stamen and then jump to three of your major, your longer major as an invitation over two diamonds. Um, I won't say it's wrong to use the transfer route because it's a very, very nice 13 count that North has. And 6-4 has a fair amount of playing shape. It's as good a 6-4 hand. It's, a, it's as good of a 6-4 13 count as you're ever going to get. Um, yes, I would because I would play exactly the same way, Sanya, because... Um, South can agree spades just by bidding three spades over three hearts and it's forcing and it's encouraging. So um, when you start Q bidding immediately, that's definitely agreeing hearts rather than spades. Absolutely. OK, next one. All right, um, this is. Um, all of the four players here are used to the, using the, four, the, the two way two diamond. Um, this will give you a little bit of a, a flavour of, of how the two way two diamond works.
Okay, so two diamonds here is two way. West might have five card hearts and any hand at all at this stage. Okay. Okay, as you can see, we've missed six hearts here. Um, how could East West have bid this differently? Um, firstly, over one no trump, two diamonds, two hearts, I feel West should bid three spades. I don't think their hand is right to bid three no trumps because it could be an absolute nightmare if... Uh, East doesn't have a club stop. West is not balanced. They are very strong. With a 19 count opposite a 10 to 12. Sorry, an 18 count opposite a 10 to 12 one no trump. So they could, it's true, bid. I'll come back to that in a minute, buddied. Okay. I will come back to that. But certainly if East bids two hearts, I think West should bid three spades to show a game forcing hand with four five plus in the majors. Um, uh, I don't think it's right for West to assume that Okay, they can't. They could bid two spades, but that doesn't show the spades. That says, partner, are you absolutely minimum? In which case, bid two no trumps, or are you um, upper range, or or even mid range? In which case, please start bidding suits upwards at the three level. So now, east would bid three diamonds. West would bid three hearts, East would bid four hearts, and now we can start Q bidding. Um, that's fine. But to come back to Walid's question, I know that East isn't um, a bursting maximum, but they do have a very good 11 count here with four controls, lots of fillers. Um, and four four three two shape. Uh, no, John. If it went one no trump, two clubs, two hearts, three spades would be eater. Three spades is eater if it starts one no trump, two clubs, two hearts. But it's not eater if it goes one no trump, two diamonds, two hearts. Three spades is simply 
showing four card spades and a game forcing hand. Ah, ah. Okay, so personally, over one no trump, two diamonds, I would personally, I would super, super accept. Um, yeah, but you're still, you're still just forcing to game. You're not forcing to slam, Sanya. So, over two diamonds, personally, I would super accept with the East hand. I'd be bidding two no trumps to show a 4 4 3 2 shape hand with no useless doubleton. That's what two no trumps shows. Uh, it's something we'll cover next week. Um, um, now, West would probably bid three spades to show. Um, Uh, a second suit in a forcing way. Um, East would bid three no trumps in case West didn't have spay, uh, hearts in the first place, although clearly they do. Um, three no trumps is basically just marking time. Um, now West would bid four clubs, uh, which would have to be beat or agreeing hearts. And so on. And it's fairly easy to get to six six clubs. Um, all sorts of ways you can get there. That's fine, John. But as I've said earlier in the lesson, um, there are times when you can be embarrassed if you're really strong uh, if you use Stamen with five forehands. Um, you, you can end up in difficult situations where you're wanting to make a forcing bid but you're actually struggling to do it ok next one I'm back in a minute Sorry, can I just send this again? John, can you pass and Sanya pass? Um, I thought I'd turn these hands round. I just imagine North is the dealer here. My apologies. I see you claim the last toffee trifle, toffee cheesecake.
Okay, um, well done. Um, can we have a lead from East? Okay, so uh, just claim Barry, please. So three no trumps here is just pass or correct um, to four spades. <laughs> I'll tell her afterwards, Sanya. <laughs> um, big thank you to you for lending me to uh, to them for so long. <laughs> so well done, Trina Trump's obviously where you want to play this hand. Okay, well done. Another fairly standard sequence here. Um, acclaim somebody. Okay, so clearly East has at least one four card major um, and a four four three two hand. Uh, over two diamonds, just going to rebid three no trumps because they've got a 12 count opposite 13 to 15. So that's a fairly easy one. Okay, well done. Yeah. Have a lead from East, please.
Um, okay, well, let's talk about that. Okay, as a reasonable viewpoint, John, it's, it's quite a nice team count. Um, I think it's not unreasonable to use Stamen here. The thing here is the 2 no trump rebid definitely denies having four card spades. North hasn't denied four spades, but South needs to, to show that they've just got a, a mild raise to 3 no trumps, and they're actually not remotely interested in the majors. Um, and uh, 2 no trumps is almost certainly the right place to play, I think. Eight tricks is the limit on the hand. So well done. And in fact, you're going to end up in two no trumps whether you use the two way two diamond or not because North has got a bare minimum. <sighs> right. Thank you. Okay, lead and claim, please. Sorry. Okay, I'm really glad this sequence happened the way it did. After the statement inquiry in the two heart bid, the two spade bid is at least mildly invitational in spades with no four card hearts. So it's showing four card space, but it's showing a hand that is at least mildly invitation. And the way the OCP plays this, the two spade bid is actually forcing to two no trumps or three spades. So over two spades, if he bids three spades, it's a sign off saying that they're not interested in game, but they have got four card spades. In practice, North's got a bursting 15 count, 
So they must show that they would accept an invitation to game in spades. And they must do it by bidding four spades. Okay. Sorry, John, scrap this one. Forget this one, guys, sorry. You could do. You could do, it depends, Sanya, on your valuation of the hand. I don't think you're quite worth a game force. I think you're worth the invitation, so two spades. If you're more optimistic, um, then bid three no trumps, it's fine. That also shows four spades. Okay, um, claim one, two, three, just, cl just claim. Okay, this is a, an instance where East actually could rebid three no trumps over two hearts, and that would show um, a game going hand with four card spades, because otherwise there'd be no reason for them to use stamen. Nothing wrong in bidding two spades. Um, the only thing is is that in this sort of situation, I think it's safer to bid three no trumps because the implication is totally clear. It's not totally unknown, although two spades is in theory forcing, it's not totally unknown for people to forget that it's forcing and pass it um, when they've got four card spades. Um, so three no trumps is safer from that point of view but uh, nothing wrong in two spades systemically systemically it is forcing um, but like I said it's not totally unknown for people to forget okay and the next you don't want to be in six spades well it honestly um One, two, four card hearts if you if you get them right. Five, six. Um, you've got to make six tricks from the spade suit. On a diamond lead, you're dead in the water, I think. Oh, what's wrong? Freezing cold and then warm and then 
Put, sh put, put, your, sh put your shawl on. One minute I'm warm and the next minute. You can play with them as long as they want to stay with you. No, I'm going to stop soon. Definitely garbage truck. Lead away, Esther. Um, one, two, three. Well, I think this is going to make fairly comfortably. Okay, typical garbage stain in hand. You can. Uh, I'm not sure I would. This doesn't have to be a garbage stamen hand. I know it's a typical garbage stamen sequence. But uh, South can have a fair amount more. And if you're treating South's bidding as a, a garbage stamen hand, they almost certainly have four card spades. So I think two spades would be sticking your neck out a little bit, Sanya. Okay. Well done. Now you're stuck, aren't you? <laughs> okay, this will show for those of you that have never used the two-way two diamonds, this, this brings the two-way two diamond right into its own. So over one no trump, two diamonds, two hearts, two spades. East would bid two no trumps if they had a rock bottom minimum. Otherwise they start bidding suits upwards. So three diamonds is not a minimum and four card diamonds. Three hearts is just a suit.
Now, the nice thing about the two-way two diamond is that now West can bid four diamonds knowing that it's A, utterly game forcing. No, four diamonds. Four diamonds. You, you tried for the heart fit and they obviously don't have hearts. So you just agree diamonds in a forcing way with four diamonds. Because you don't want to play in three no trumps if partner hasn't got a four card spade suit. So the implication of this is that actually West has got at least a game going hand, if not a slam going hand. And they have got a diamond fit. So now East can potentially start Q bidding. So four hearts is just a Q bid. Now the best bid from East here is four no, tr is okay. Five clubs are right, but I would bid four no trumps with the East hand because I really want to hear if West has got um, the ace of clubs. Four no trumps is rolling. Um, because uh, basically since we started Q bidding we haven't missed out any sequences so four diamonds was a green diamonds four hearts was a cubid four spades was a cubid so four no trumps can't be backing off saying um, I want to play in no trumps now it's just saying I don't have the ace of clubs um, but I want to carry on Q bidding given given your possession of a spade control um, so that's that's what's called a rolling four no trumps. Uh, six diamonds is absolutely the right place to play, so I can't argue with how it's gone. Well, um, she could have five diamonds, and, and actually, with the sequence as it's gone, she ought to have five diamonds. Um, because uh, clearly she hasn't got four clubs because she bid three diamonds. I mean, really, she should bid three no trumps over two spades, um, which would be three, three, four, three, or three, 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 four. Um, and now West could bid four clubs, and now four diamonds, and now West starts Q bidding. But. Uh, these things are sometimes forgotten. Um, so when West bids the di sorry, when East bids three diamonds, they clearly haven't got four card clubs. When they don't agree hearts, they haven't got four hearts, and they didn't bid three spades. Therefore, they cannot have four card spades. And that means with the way that OCP works that actually she ought to have five diamonds. Um, it's worked out okay. It worked out okay though. Uh, and we'll come to that a little bit more next week when we look at the two-way two diamond in a bit more depth. Okay, last couple and then we're going to call it a night. Um, sorry, no, it's, it's, I've mucked the hand up, I think. Um, no, I just bet it anyway, John, it doesn't matter. 
I've given you a one diamond opener, not a not a one no trump opener, but just bid it anyway. Yeah, well, no, I think the record's about three and a half hours, but um, it happens more over the winter when I'm starting at nine o'clock. Uh, in my experience, it's difficult to get people to sit. So this will be a, a different sort of a sequence going back to last week. I've got mine. Thank you, John. But it's, but it's decaf. Yeah, well, it's probably about 2 a.m. for them. Sanya? And it's probably about 2 a.m. for you, isn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, Ed, your stamina is, your stamina is ad admirable. I didn't realise Egypt was um, four hours ahead. Midnight in Croatia. Good grief. It's nearly midnight here. Ah, oh, right. Okay, Portugal. Yes. All right, guys, stop boasting. Walid's got. Walid's won this 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 contest for sure. Yeah, well, close enough. Right. Stop stop the chat. You're putting John off his bidding. <laughs> okay, so as we discussed last week, three hearts here is any range if balanced, but lower range if not balanced. Um, at least ho ho Very nice sequence, guys. Well done. So here, clearly, North doesn't have four-card hearts and doesn't have four-card spades. Otherwise, they could bid three spades over three hearts. So it's totally safe now, really, for um, South to bid... 
uh, four diamonds over three no trumps. Uh, personally, I wouldn't bid three no trumps with the north hand opposite a uh, what's probably a 13 to 15 one no trump or a lower range hand with five card diamonds. But uh, uh, as long as south can rely on north's bidding, it's safe for them to bid four diamonds and six diamonds a good contract. And right on the money, the diamonds are going to go away. The spades are going on the long clubs. So you've just got the queen of hearts to lose. Well done. Right, last one, guys. Um... And six no trumps would, would arguably be okay there. Um, six no trumps is right sided. Um, but I think six diamonds a bit safer. Um, sorry. Oh, hell. Sorry, I've mucked this one up as well. Um, okay, we're playing 13 to 15, one no trump throughout here, just for this hand. So just open it one no trump anyway, but it's 13 to 15, not um, not 10 to 12, Sanya, okay? No, just, just open one no trump. You would open one diamond with OCP with this hand, but... Uh, But we'd lose the sequence. So Esther, this is a 13 to 15 one no trump. Just imagine you were red, yes. Now, going back to uh, to what John said here uh, earlier, if we were playing asking bids at this stage, East would be bidding three hearts, which would be Eater in spades. Um, but uh, let's see if she can get there without using Eater. Um, well, you just have to remember it again. Um, that would be cheating, Roger.
Okay, so two top honours and the jack. So this is relay beta. Because we can't possibly want to play in, in no trumps when we got a really good spade fit. No, 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 four no trumps is beta. Um, rolling Sanya only rolling bids only come into play in in the middle of a a Q bidding sequence, not in an asking bid sequence. Um, can't be five clubs, Sanya. Sanya, can't be five clubs. Five clubs would be showing naught to two controls. And you've got three. Uh, yes, it is. You're not well. Why? What's up with her? She was okay on the walk. Ah, she just wants her love. You just want love. You just want her love, didn't you? I think she's all right. Well, she was fine on the wall. Okay, well done. Um, other ways you could bid this would be a two way two diamond um, from East rather than Stamen. But uh, with a 19 count opposite, a 13 to 15 one no trump, I think East can be fairly certain that they're going to slam. So um, uh, 
And in fact, you need this is 75%. You need one of two finesses uh, to be right, which is reasonable. They certainly are. All right, guys. I think we'll leave it there, given that it's uh, midnight and we've been going for three hours. <laughs> so if you're going to come next week please have a look at the one no trump page on my website uh sometime during the week and have a read through the section on the two-way two diamond before next week because it will uh will pay dividends uh and please do, I would encourage you to come next weekend. Uh, said that two-way two diamond really is worth its weight in gold. Um, don't forget the practices tomorrow and on Thursday. I'm sure John and Roger will be really happy to see you. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next week. Night all. Bye for now.